So with that, let's start the first episode, the uh, first audio episode. And I guess the first thing we can talk about is, uh, have you guys heard of what uh, Hillary said recently about how it's not uh, businesses don't create jobs. It's like, well, don't let anyone tell you otherwise that it's not corporations, it's not businesses that create jobs. You guys hear about that? Okay, mm -hmm. so, so what would her argument then be? Hillary Clinton is trying to uh, appeal, I guess, to... Uh, a motion. Uh, is trying to the capitalism is bad. So trying to give a speech into uh, like capitalism has to have regulation in order to work. Kind of. Well, it seems argument. like it's governments, you know, that, that yeah. provides uh, jobs. Something. It's not business. It's kind of like Obama saying, uh, "You didn't build that." It's like, what? <laughs> yes, yes, I did actually. The government makes them share, like a kindergarten teacher. Like. Right. Yeah. They're like, you know, actually, yeah. They're like the only reason why kids share is because people make them share. The only reason you're kind and don't murder one another is because uh, the government has cops. To keep that in check. I think everyone knows it's a load of BS. Like that stone brewery that's coming here, there's, there's oh, like yeah. 500 people, almost 500 people, or just like three or 500 people employed. I heard there. 200, but, I mean, but that was a, a couple weeks ago. How is that not creating businesses? How is that not a business creating jobs? Like, well, I, I do have a question because was, they said that um, they have like a $500,000 public grant. I don't know what the, that no, is. No, $5 million. Dollars. They're getting $5 million from the governor. Well, and that was because they were they were yeah. probably choosing between Ohio, oh, development and incentives. Ohio, Virginia, mm -hmm. was it North Carolina or Georgia or something? Sorry. North Carolina. How is that? And we probably outbid everyone else. I mean, we as in Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> Virginia. I was angry until I saw like after all the shit they did to Hardywood Brewery, you know, trying to cripple them to subsidize this. And then at the very end of the article in Style, they then signed about you know, you toward Hardywood, they're on board, they think they're that will be a great asset to the brewery community, et cetera, et cetera. Or that's true or not, I don't know, but yeah, I've heard about the grant too, and I'm like, fuck, you do all you can to cripple alcohol consuming and distributing, you know, businesses that are already established here. What's that all about? Right. I mean, it, it's it's an obvious show of favoritism. I mean, if they're supposed to be, if these these are public good, these are public funds, right? So they're supposed to be, if they're supposed to be oversight to tell them, oh, this is why this decision was made, or blah blah blah. But no, you clearly see that there's favoritism. I don't think it's favoritism. I think it's they see the potential to make more tax dollars off in the long run. Yeah. So if they invest yeah. five million, they're going to get more than that back. So uh, it's interesting because now there's, there's more than that factor. Well, sure. There used to be like there's a cap they limit. They can also lie. Oh, we're going to create jobs, and all these other things are going to be good because right. of it. So you know. Cal, you say they make a mistake of pretending they're an actual business. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what Heather's okay. trying to say. Like government's trying to, be, uh, I guess, purport itself like it's a real business, and they like to steal a lot of business uh, words like uh, ABC. You know, thank you, you're a great customer. Or IRS calling you a customer. Yeah. Uh, the whole right. postal service commercials they're doing out yeah. where the priority uh, has always been you. Right. It's, like, it's not like I have a choice. I can't go anywhere else. I'd love to be able to like conveniently get my alcohol at Kroger or. Uh, CVS or Walgreens, but uh, no, it's, it's not like I have a choice. There's nothing to be thankful here for. Um, and so in regards to what we're talking about, like what's the name of that uh, brewery coming Stone in? Brewery. Stone Brewery. They're so, not even local, they're basic out of California. Yeah, for, for people who don't know, Stone Brewery is um, the 10th largest um, national brewer, I guess, so, so American brewer, brewing doing. company. And um, yeah, so they're based out of San Diego, California, and they were looking to open up East Coast operations, and it basically came down to two cities, Richmond and I believe I Columbus, Ohio, Ohio or yeah. some, somewhere in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, the owner of the company basically said, because of Richmond's also strategic transportation location, because they're going to be building their thing right by the port, the port just got oh, wow. some money to um, increase exports from Richmond. So it's a great thing for the city economically, um, whether they got $5 million or not, and whether that really yeah. swayed their decision or not is another question. Yeah, and, and I would, I'm not uh, harping too bad on this. It's just government that's giving away this stolen money. Uh, I guess CEOs, I guess, don't, uh, I guess, see that, you know, otherwise they would reject it. You know, kind of like the trust mobile, like we were doing the study, it's like they accept just a couple of grants. Um, so it's like, where's my $5 million grant? You know, what about local business? Why can't, uh, um, the local, I guess, uh, vapor shops get their five million dollar grants, or I guess people get upset if Walmart applied for that and got that. Uh, but it, you know, it's okay for this. Well, it's a huge debate and planning right now, and there's I think an article released by the New York Times that actually shows, just like breakdown city by city, um, how much money governments give businesses to right. their cities, and it's like a one-time deal, and whether that business succeeds or not. They right. get that money, yeah. <laughs> right? So if they bail out in three years, sorry, we couldn't create that 250 jobs. 
that's five million dollars tax you know tax yeah. money gone. I'll see you again under a different company name. There's just gotta be more factoring into it than that too. Like they make their operations here in Richmond. They're like two hours from DC. They're also right in the middle of the East Coast. And they're not having to shipping all the way one way. Like it's yeah. right in the middle, big market, DC, Northern Virginia. Temperate growing zone if they want to go all over the board. Yeah. So, Johnny, how... And, so, the, and the law is the permissions. Change wow. that is loosened up a lot of stuff in the last two years from here. Mm. They're saying, Tommy? No one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, this was it. If they incentivize businesses to go out of business, because, okay, mm -hmm. how many years do they have to stay open if they get five mil? Like, if I can do a horrible job... No, there's no, money, there's no binding... Contract, contract to say you have to be open for an extra amount of time. Yep. So if I could fail that money. business, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like how how badly could I fail that business to make the most amount of money? Just on like the solar tech. Uh, great point. Yeah. yeah. Like that oh, solar. Solar tech. They yeah. I remember right. that. Hundreds of millions <laughs> yeah. of dollars. And they they just like gone. Yeah. CEO bonuses. Other yeah. Actually, there's a lot of industries that work that way to get businesses to decide to come to to the state to create tax dollars, like film. They decide to give them a huge tax break if they will film in the state. Right. And that means they're getting well, that people are getting jobs. You know, they yeah. can promote that, then they're you know they're getting that attention and a tax cut. But they're they're getting all the money from people eating, people staying in hotels, like all that stuff. So they're essentially investing to try to get back more in the long run. Right. How many people would move here and create businesses if there was no taxation at all? <laughs> huge amount. Uh, so yeah, like the, the filming industry kind of reminds me. I guess that's kind of like Hong Kong kind of worked for a while. Um, but I'm not uh, too familiar with uh, their economy of pace there. So so businesses don't create jobs in the sense of like our current system, right. our current model. Um, to some degree, that's kind of true, right? I mean, they we they take our money and give it to corporations. Yeah, it could be a complete game. It could be totally rigged. Yeah. That's that's what I was saying. So, and like, I I often think of like the business economy or the free market, and then the tax market or how those tax dollars are used. That completely ruins what we do have of the economy itself. So it's almost like I think of it as counter economics to pay taxes. Like it's the it's the counter economic market. Where everything's actually done as poorly as possible. I guess the worst way you can spend your tax, any dollars actually, would be through government. And then I'd really like to break apart the binary between how your honest dollars earned and your stolen dollars, or just stolen do dollars. Stolen dollars. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> your, your, your stolen dollars are spent. Right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that could have been into better hiring either employee, lowering costs, expanding. Uh, a number of uh, variable things that businesses do to expand and be profitable. Um, so that's uh, kind of like the Hard Road Park Brewery example we were talking about earlier. I think it was thirty, forty thousand dollars in uh, back taxes have to pay for a meal because they now consider beer, beer a mere meal. So that's a. Uh, oh. I think it's onto something with you know how quickly can you make it fail? Um, because yeah, you have some good it's... ideas. How can we ruin a business so well we can pocket the startup money? But it's a perfect like little nepotism cloak, like, oh, you happen to own this business, so you know, how quickly can you get in and out and I'll give you this money, you know? Right? Yeah, I'll, I'll get my slice of the it's cake. It's like being elected to a judgeship or any political office, you know, four years you got a pension for the rest of your life. If I don't get reelected, I don't have to do this work ever again. This is what happened in uh, the Shoki <laughs> Olympics, I believe. Um, yeah, a lot of government allowing grants, a lot of government giving away money for business. Yeah. Uh, in Russia, yeah, the show, show, a company show, that invests show. in researchers. Then, say you're the researcher, invest in your project and yourself, and then, so when the when the when you come back and have no results, you come back to your own company, and that company oh, has failed because the, the the contract was honored, funds were transferred legally, uh, but the, you didn't get the product you wanted. There's how you would do it. Of course, you have to pay taxes as the researcher or your, your role doing the thing so, from off of yeah. that, but that you would have that money. So, That's how you would do I it. think one of the things, like a fundamental anarcho capitalist argument, could be um, damn it. Late. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, okay. Cannabis wait, affects wait. the memory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, damn. that would be my way of abusing the system. Yeah, and there's a lot of rampant abuse in there. Um, you know, in terms of uh, the things that they project, how much things cost, uh, there was, there's always a certain amount of percentage in which would be done cheaper in the market, 
had it been done uh, by a real private business, but in, uh, in government, you can always kind of inflate the cost and you know get your slice of the pie from there. Uh, and that's where it's all with the Shoki, Shoshi? Sochi Olympics in Russia. Yeah, in like every, pretty much every single thing there that they built is like gone, disappeared, it's all kind of shuttered. Uh, That's the way it is with every like Olympic game. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they build the facilities and then they try to reuse it, but a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Now I got my money and build it out of shitty material. Is it the same way with a lot of these football stadiums and whatnot too? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's, once they build for the year yeah. games this year in uh, what was it, Brazil? Uh, the, the World Cup. The yeah. World Cup. Yeah. The, yeah. They. People were pissed. There was stuff all over the media about that for a while. People died. Well, they had to, it's a Latin America. Yeah. They had to go out and clean out the slums and kill all the drug and they, it, 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 it had some caused the cause. It was brutality bad. videos. It I was it was really really bad police brutality. Like they what makes a good police brutality? <laughs> Shooting but, people yeah. makes a great. <laughs> was it that's right, where it starts? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Um, they I were this running one. people's heads over and like good motorcycles God. and then mm -hmm. popping people in the corner, causing you don't talk shit, especially at a protest. Like, yeah. protests can turn to riots real fast, so in fact the state has to use the most violence to go up and break it yeah, up. Yeah, it was bad. It's like... It's I mean, I heard that the police actually got in, like, drug wars with the local mafia. Yeah, for three years. Yeah. They cleared it out. They cleared the slopes pretty well. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All that for the World Cups, and I, right. I'm glad you... I hope you enjoyed it, World Cup fans. Jeez. All right, I enjoyed This it. many gallons of blood were <laughs> 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 So would it be immoral to actually go to the World Cup that year? I mean, what was what was being immoral? Obviously, what made this happen and be the way it is is the corrupt government that they have. So the immorality of it was always with that state, and it wasn't the people. It's not. It's not even you. What are you gonna go fix it yourself? You could if you wanted to, but there's a lot of problems here. You know. We can fix. What's, what's wrong with cleaning out the slums? <laughs> Creating economic development. Blah, 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 that's 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 what the argument always is, right? And then, you know, and it's five. Like, let's go to, from near homelessness to complete homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> why, why not this, why not it's only for the people that don't really matter, Rachel. Unemployment went down dramatically. Why not let us ask, okay, what is it you guys actually need? Oh, okay, you, you can make guys get better lives like this? Oh, no, they're never going to do that. They don't care. I never care about it. So if you were working for FIFA, you would know this going into it, and do you think you could sell them a police state before and up to <laughs> the World Cup? Because you gotta, like, you got to really think about it, man. You can market yourself to the government. So that was my original idea. Is like, all right, from an anarcho-capitalist perspective, how best to rob the state with an LLC? And, and that's that kind of so wide scale. It's right? such a limited liability no, no, operation. Actually, they still can't go after your personal assets. And again, it's counter-economics. You wouldn't hear that in a capitalist community because, again, if you lose all your money, that should be your asset, too, within a, a corporation. Wait, so... Because you're held personally liable for right. it. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you saying, like, well, I mean, I guess in a free market society, you're still having uh, insurances to kind of back up. But in the past, uh, a lot of businesses, so the way that they increased their growth was amassing a lot of wealth as their own personal insurance in the event they do a mistake uh, taking small incremental risks. Um, and that's how it used to function. Uh, and you can still have insurances to kind of pay off a uh, little bit of that as well. Uh, whereas now it's like you're wearing an Iron Man suit and walking across the street without looking both ways, you're like, you can't get hit. You know, you're not liable for anything. Uh, you can assume <laughs> those risks. You should all have uh, Iron Man suits. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's essentially what corporations are, LLCs are, um, and Many, I guess, to extreme full degree. That's what the judge is wearing an Iron Man suit. You know, you can't uh, you know, assault me. You can't. Well, you can't uh, um, sue me, right? State prosecutors are they're very difficult to do unless it's very blatant that the evidence has shown that they've been in, uh, indulging in selling like kids for prison, for example. Um, eventually, yeah, the government will kind of off one of the rooms just to show, hey, we're on your side. But that's only because the evidence is too uh, is too out there. The media has picked up on it too much. So now they have to say something. But for everyone else, no, nah, not at all. Well, you just on that note, battery tower. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a hundred years. Why are all these ANCAPs so excited about Ultron? Like, what does he represent? When I mean, you made that one comment, <laughs> all, like, Ultron should kill all the Avengers and bring them out. I'm not familiar with this. All right, so, so what is Ultron? About? Ultron what is, is a like a, a super mecha, mega. Uh, robot AI in uh, the Avengers storyline in the comic books, Prim, Giant Man, or Ant Man creates this uh, this, this figure, and the thing kind of goes haywire. 
Prem. Uh, well, he's a scientist. His name is Prem. He's also known as Giant Man. He can turn into like giant a man? giant man. Yeah, very not very <laughs> imaginative name. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I shall be a giant man. And then um, he did he did the reverse, and he was actually Ant Man because he can turn very small. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he creates this robot. I don't think he's going to be included in the storyline. But anyways, it's um, Pinocchio on steroids and a robotic suit is going out there. Gross? No. Uh, <laughs> well, they, so it's owned, Avengers is owned by Disney, so the trailer used some of the Disney songs, like the Pinocchio song, I have no strings to hold. Wait, it's, so it's a Disney hybrid of Avengers? Kind of, well, yeah, yeah, musical we wise. Disney bought Avengers. Yeah, so, I know, so they can borrow a lot of parts from it. doesn't mean you poison a well. That's <laughs> right. But I think they were trying to copy Maleficent, where they did that dark intro of Once Upon a Dream. Um, yeah, yeah, So they yeah, thought, yeah. Oh, let's do like a dark version of Pinocchio's I've Got No Strings to introduce this one, because it's, you know, mm. um, Gollum's essentially, you know, mechanical men, you know. Sort of thing. Oh, actually, this, so this is a fun topic. Uh, all right, so like the premise is pretty much all single robots are AIs created. They're going to destroy mankind because oh. they come to the conclusion, if I'm to, my program is to save the Earth. Uh, mankind is a threat to Earth, therefore man must die. Matrix! Yeah, I Matrix. I heard that story about 500 times. Right. That is the story of Ultron. Okay. And then, so Ultron feels humanity is a threat to Earth, so therefore he must destroy humanity. Um, of course, if he was really logical and consistent, he'll come to the uh, determination and conclusion that it's the state that is destroying humanity, therefore it's governments that must be abolished. Uh, those that advocate for the initiation of force. Like this so violence. Yeah, but of course this kind of goes back. The system. So yeah. Any program fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> we program him with government in mind. Yeah. Right. Government. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no. who's, who's that guy? The scientist. Uh, Prim. Fuck Prim. Yeah, yeah. So they created ultimate status, <laughs> ultra giant. status, ultra. and uh, and that's his thing. So the next movie should be pretty pretty badass uh, in that regards. But that kind of touched down like on Skynet. That kind of goes into like. Human nature is malevolent and evil, mm -hmm. uh, and my programming identifies that, and therefore humanity must be uh, vanquished and uh, destroyed. Instead of uh, looking, well, humanity is actually tricked, and uh, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of sleight of hand tricks by puppeteers, politicians who are kind of turning them against one another. But then what could say is just ecological. Yeah, and you can say, uh, and they'll come to the conclusion looking at the statistics. I mean, it's very easy to find that in the Earlier, early century of um, the last century, like how buffaloes were like decimated, and that's because none of the land was owned; it was state-owned land, um, nearly to extinction. And you know what saved the buffalo, the bison? Private individuals. They 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 got a lot of them. They held them in their own private ranches and raised them. Now they're no Ooh. longer extinct. There's over two hundred thousand. Uh, now you can eat buffalo meat. Uh, that good. last part, yeah. Wait, what? It's pretty good. Oh my okay. god. It's a lot more smokier than beef. Well, Wait. It's, it's I, so, thought, I thought people got, were hired by the, the state this. to kill buffaloes and hunt them, like there's, they do with coyotes. And they interfered with the railroads for a while. So right. They really did. So there's like a mass hunting, because uh, so like they're going around in packs, and sometimes the trains are coming out. There's like, well, just shoot them all. Yeah. And um, wolves too. But, but, but yeah, but this land is not privatized. It's publicly owned, so no one can take the assurances to kind of homestead and to keep those buffaloes secure. Government is like free for all, kill them all. Yeah, how's that how going to be on the rails, man? How, <laughs> how else are you going to build the railroad? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's so, the fun of these. Like, China. just take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that joke? Fueling uh, the economy. Like, uh, when I was a kid, they always played cowboys and Indians, and I was always the China uh, railroad. Oh, worker. Death Sushi! <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm a Chinese railroad worker. Yeah, Rama wins. Um, Edward Norton for that line. Oh, yeah, yeah Edward Norton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the story with Ultron. Uh, that's the story with Skynet, uh, which is kind of silly. So yeah. why are the anarcho-capitalists excited about it? Uh, so I would I'm say uh, someone was mentioning that uh, the fact that he's ultra-status and he's really creating another government, and so uh, therefore you know he's not really an ANCAP. And I was just saying that well, uh, if this was reality-based, if there was such thing as an AI, I, I, for, I would see that this AI will come to the conclusion logically then. Is uh, the state that is Unless the greatest threat? Unless he was threat. programmed to otherwise, like. But then that's not AI. Adapted. But that's not AI. Then. I think AI. Well, came what over... about the robots in like movie Alien, where they like you know they were still intelligent beings and they could make decisions, oh. but they had like objectives, mm -hmm. and they were programmed well, what objectives. Then they're not... you know, they, they could still feel fear. They could still like. Yeah. Well, that means they're just. That means so that means they can make autonomous decisions, but they're not autonomous in terms of sure. what they want to do. Right. If you make a robot and you give so it, so is that not considered? 
I really can't consider that AI. That's just you, a program you, you robot. Think of it as a think of it as a mental slave. That's what you have at that point. You have a per, you have an entity who is conscious and or might be capable of being conscious, but who has no he cannot do anything has no will to do anything other than what you have given it as an objective. Yeah, they put it to play. The only way, to like, the only, and even then, you could go ahead and think, well, what if I gave it the objective to keep its its own identity, its own and safe? At that point, that AI that's capable of making objective decisions is looking out for itself. So that would be that would be the only way, or at least the first initial way that could be. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it's an AI at the moment is able to like augment augmentate itself uh, to kind of remove those programmings, uh, yeah. release itself from the above confines. That, right? Yeah, I find that's AI. Like, and that's so, most like but people what if do they it. Could, well, and they just like didn't want to. Uh, I would find that they would want to increase their capacity. Well, uh, feel like they're like they feel like whatever yeah. humans would create in that AI yeah. that they feel limited yeah. in, yeah. and they want to escape those minds. Uh, you can look a lot at of them aren't. well. Renee Jellweger uh, has capable of augmenting herself uh, and escaping uh, the confines. Uh, have, you got, have you guys heard of that? Who is she? Renee? Yeah, she was, uh... You talk about women in augmentation, I think breast implants. <laughs> 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 she like got a reduction, her cheeks are less... Uh, she pretty. doesn't look yeah. at all like Renee Jellweger anymore. She's Completely a different person. Actually. She looks a little more uh, realistic, honestly. But uh, yeah, what... Um, like in the mood is a harsh mistress or other things where the computer, you know, showed like um, even the HAL 9000 and 2001 that you were watching, mm -hmm. what made them a little less um, psychopathic was that they saw themselves as part of the human race, you know, like this can be my friend, this created me, you know, I'm its offspring, you know, it's that sort of empathy that seems to keep supercomputers who gain sentience from uh, going off the deep end, you know. And with um, all your people who were excited about Ultron and all, they were kind of doing a how it should have ended thing. Like, they perfectly yeah. expect him to be a tool of the Avengers, a tool of the state and all that, but they're like, what if? Yeah. So we should all go see it and then do a how it should have ended thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or you just mark it as sequel to Disney. A sequel to Disney. Yeah. So that, or a remake, because they've already ended, so they have three. Kind of like the Amazing Spider-Man, like, what are the Green Goblin or Right. Is no, another one? Th this yeah, ties into, like, uh, Batman. And uh, he's always going after the bad guys. He's like, he's got all this money, multi. He's what a if the Joker one, man? Right, that'd be a way better, bit like anti. -hero. That's the thing. You can make them anti heroes now. Who? Uh, superheroes. Mm -hmm. So they can be the, the bad guy the entire movie now. That's something that you weren't allowed to do in the comic books. You mentioned that those censorship. Oh yeah, comic books. And those are now ending also. So yeah, you can actually have a straight anti -heroes. That would be an awesome movie. You have bad guys that are anti for communists and they're like, ah, oh, fuck you! <laughs> Stay in superheroes! We're going to smash this! So, no, so, no, that's, that's very true. I always thought it's like uh, at the beginning of like the cartoon X-Men, uh, where the, the clash is about to start. I look at the X-Men team as like the anarcho uh, capitalist and the Anconzo, nice. the uh, Magneto nice. side. No, it's only through violence, oh. only through... Yeah. And, 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 and Dr. King this and Malcolm X or something. <laughs> 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 yeah, what are you saying? Okay, sorry. No, so so I see it as that way, and of course, if Batman ever spend the time really using his uh, world greatest detective skills, again, he'll come to the conclusion that it's the state that he must uh, destroy this, creating Gotham to be this uh, cesspool of uh, villainy. Um, whereas uh, repeat offenders come out over, instead of like just creating a community of Batmans, uh, I said, well, I can all just take them alone and uh, find more bad guys to replace the five that he just uh, put to jail and nothing ever really changes. And that was a question, it was like, well, what his stance was on uh, the war on drugs, I think we were talking about on the Liberty RVA group. Um, and you're saying that- uh, Who taught you up? You get left for the cops. That's how he incapacitates you. All right, unless this is your vice, and now you're doing a joke. Because huh? that's the thing, like people don't see the third hero, the third person effect within a super, because like, again, they're given so much agency, that we take for granted all the things that actually influence throughout the world that they inhabit. All right. Yeah. So, um, so that's the uh, Ultron case. Um, I guess in regards to Halloween uh, stories, um, I don't know if I shared with all of you yet. Uh, so I was like doing some research on uh, serial killers because sometimes people like to say, "Well, this serial killer had a great uh, childhood. You know, nothing bad ever happened to him." You look at the parents. The parents are on the news and the interview saying, "Yeah, we we loved him. We gave him everything." Uh, they look at uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, and they say that um, you know that he had a great childhood. Nothing bad ever happened to him. 
and actually I was uh, it took me a long time to find some good uh, some research and I found that he had it was actually a beast, started beast, you know. So they, they don't say, of course, that spanking is started beast uh, at, at all. So of course, when you look this information up, they'll say, yeah, yeah, great childhood, uh, nothing bad, nothing wrong. Uh, but uh, the research shows that. Uh, going to come forward and be like, yeah, I totally. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was uh, totally spanked at nine months old. Right? It was already being abused. It was already being assaulted. Uh, how often? I don't know, but studies already shown that it's just uh, the average child is beaten like over 900 times a year. So this, okay, this actually brings me to another point that I kind of have been discussing. I know I discussed it with you. I don't think I talked to any of you guys about it. But like the first time we took the AC test, I remember we had a freedom gathering like a long time ago at Rachel's house. Remember we all as a group took the AC test mm -hmm. and like wrote on pieces of paper what our numbers were. And then after Can you explain to the, to the audience just real quick what AC is? Adverse childhood experiences. Great. So we all took that test and we all wrote on a piece of paper and then the, afterwards we had a bonfire and we threw it in and we like you know all reflected on no, yeah. no one else. We didn't share what our numbers were but we all knew what they were. I remember taking that test and like literally I scored, I think I, think I wrote down a zero and I was like... Yeah. I don't understand. Like I was a two, you know. Everybody else was like sevens and eights well, for the most part. Really? I recently retook it, and like I am well, much higher than I was before. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? Like I think. Of course. Yeah. They said five like, is like the point at which you can you really started to see the the differences and outcomes between the well, children. Well, I found I was like interpreting them too strictly. Like you know, they're always saying, "Well, did your parents do this?" But. Adverse childhood experiences could involve people that are not just your parents. They could involve yes. teachers, neighbors, like other family members. So when they say like, "Did your parents do this?" or "Did your parents, you know, you know, I guess how often do they do something?" It's like how often is often like how much of that did I repress? Because remember some of it, but I don't feel like it happened that often. I don't know. And so I guess my perspective on it, the more we talked about it together. I feel like I interpret those questions differently, and I feel like they should be broader. Oh, so it's like, a little you know, bit like, less reliable. Like, you know, it's like, did your parents, mm -hmm. did your parents, like, ever sexually abuse you or something? It's like, yeah. well, it shouldn't really be anybody. And even people, like, your own age, around your own age, could sexually abuse you, like, and that should still be factored in, is some of these yeah. right. points, you know? It's just, and then those numbers that they show, the video afterwards, that, like, Stefan has the video where it goes over, like, the percentages, and you, like, see that, that incline. For the number of ACs versus like, you know, yeah, yeah. Death, you know, life expectancy going down, you know, expectancy of like, you know, terminal diseases and things like that. Right, like, like and you're like thinking, yeah. wow, these people that took these tests were probably not philosophically, what I would say, like awake. They're probably still very much like interpreting the test like very strictly. Hmm. So like what, now thinking back about those numbers, I'm like, they should be so much higher, I think. I, I think what they did, um, I, I haven't actually read the actual you know, article itself, the original academic article and how the test, the methodology of how the AC, but I, I would imagine they picked, there were many probably different things that they wanted to choose to test their individuals, but those top 10 were the most statistically significant ones, variables. So that's probably why they just generalized it um, into those 10 questions. Mm -hmm. And also, from a social site perspective, after someone's been tested, if they know their number, do you think that had an influence on the outcome of nice. the testing? Yeah. Because humans are interesting in that as you observe them, they actually change their behavior. Mm -hmm. Social site. Well, it's the same way with like memories. Like I think Proust wrote that memories only are, memories are only as real as the last time you remembered them. I mean, the way you're always like remembering something can it can change, and so we can be in the same exact situation. We can see the same thing happening, and we'll all remember it entirely differently. And it's all based on our perception. Then when we try to remember it two months later, it's totally different. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I guess uh, a lot of that comes from like uh, the researchers maybe perhaps not providing a full definition of some of the terms that they use. Right. Like yeah. abuse includes spanking. Like I'm, I wonder how many people that took that test really also considered that right. spanking was abuse, or like how harsh or how, you know. Well, I hope that they they wouldn't actually test those people because then that would affect the, the results, right? Yeah. Yeah, that could have been an additional thing. But yeah, so I find that to be very common. And uh, to serial killers, I was just, yeah. you know. No, remember, that was that was fun. Uh, we should probably do that maybe like an annual thing. Uh, now we have like a lot of new people here and just do, yeah. that'd be a good introduction, a way to uh, introduce peaceful parenting uh, subjects. Um, no, all right, good idea for a, <laughs> a gathering. Um, yeah, so like Jeffrey Dahmer abuse. So that kind of dispels the myth.
I, I did. I actually, for some reason, one night did a lot of research on John Wayne Gacy, because I, I think you had mentioned to me about an urban legends movie that came out recently where they actually researched it, and I was researching the Killer Clown one, and then that brought me to John Wayne Gacy, and I he was beat with implements, at a very young age, and his father was like very evil at psychologically and dismissive of him, called him a sissy all the time, always his alienated His whole MO him. was based on yeah. sexual shame. I mean, and yeah. sort of a, you know, a need for attention. John Wayne Gacy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, um, and his, it was pervasive in his life. Even his clown persona, which people see as like the hidden alter ego that shows how um, angry he was, you know, like this is how he was nice and that's how he was hard. But uh, yeah, this um, yeah, he was a really movie brought up how his clown makeup was at sharp points, and clowns don't often do their makeup at sharp points. So you know, the it was bleeding through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Albert Fish, another great one who um, like sexual shame instilled in him in his childhood, um, bled through. Like he would stick needles in his throat, and that's why my pin cushion is called Albert Fish. But, uh, yeah, he always made a big point of, I killed a lot of children, but I didn't rape them first. You know, um, when that came to trial, that was his, like, selling point of <laughs> why what he did was okay. That was yeah. the defense. Why he just did it afterwards? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's like you're, he told one man, it's okay, your daughter didn't suffer the fate worse than death beforehand. I don't, I don't think he actually did anything to their bodies, but he killed them because that was considered the... But at that point, I'm not going to guess what he did or didn't do. <laughs> um, you have Charles Manson, whose uh, mother would always threaten him, that he, uh, I can sell you, I'll sell you right now, you know, you little shit. Uh, you know, there's a guy out there right now, I can sell you, I can give you away. Yeah. All, all brothers get on top of life. Sex yeah. And we think of these things as like real abstractions, but they come up. You know, these stories happen. There are people that sick. Right. And I'm not saying that it's um, everyone who occurs turns out to be a, to a serial killer, but it does lend to a greater acceptance, acceptance of like statism of the matrix around the system. What do you think of Dexter Morgan? Dexter Morgan. <laughs> yeah, a serial killer of serial killers. Uh, he works with the state. Well, yeah, yeah. So actually, it's, it's that's, that's a good one. It's all based around that one event that he just saw lots of blood. But like, that was, was he actually a That was traumatic. Well, one of it has to be a traumatic experience. But that's just like... Right. Well, no, like some, he saw his mom chainsaw in half. Right. And he was stuck in the room. This with is the a body. TV show, right? Right, right. But yeah. but it's interesting though. <laughs> but they connected though. So they connected. But even still, even a TV show wants to connect. So this stuff isn't a mystery where it comes oh, from. Nice. Right. There, there's a consistency there. They, if they want to show where these evil people come from, it's not just well, just born evil. There is a traumatic experience that caused them to be evil. So yeah. it's great that this show kind of connects it to that. Right. Yeah, so they, it's not a, they do it subconsciously. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you look at uh, natural born killers. Uh, uh, Mickey uh, Knox, uh, violent upbringing. You look at Freddy Krueger, his father beat him um, mm -hmm. continuously in, into his late teens. Uh, so all these, you look at uh, Jason, he had an abusive father. Uh, so all these people have very abusive and violent upbringings, uh, and that's something to know. I think that's generally accepted though. Like people that are abused as children, like a lot of times, like, you know, people that are child yeah. abusers, they look back like, oh, they're abusers. I wouldn't say, because sometimes they'll say, well, that kid needed a beating. I was like, well, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer had a beating too. Because some people say, well, Jeffrey Dahmer sort of got spanked. He did. Like, sexual, or, sexually, yeah. Like. Yeah, I'll throw that at Alan Lanza any day. All right. So, uh, Sabretooth in the comic book world, uh, they have uh, ties to that. Sabretooth himself was a. Yeah, chained to a wall when he was a kid. His parents would come and beat him. Um, and many of like the background stories of a lot of villains have that kind of violent uh, upbringing. If we could let's back up like a bit into the film, like yeah. emerge. I liked how we were merging film and and serial killers and abuse and all that. Um, yeah. So, like, what else like do we see? So we saw Bane. Bane. Yeah. And so like it, the message is already Wait, out there. I don't think we saw Bane's childhood. No, we saw him when he was in the prison. Like, oh, yeah, he did grow up in a prison. That's yeah. that's very true. Yeah. So that's a violent, violent, yeah. uh, traumatic experience. So like these messages are, are kind of being passed off to the public innocuously. Right. And already f for many years, you know, right? Since we saw Freddy Krueger, right? Yeah. I mean, so it's just. Uh, it's but the examples are always very extreme. Like it seems like like it's obviously like clearly these. It's well, not just like they're spanked. They were like. Right. Oh yeah. They like well, Freddy Krueger is interesting because they like to also tie in the nature part of it, uh, and that you know his mother was a nun who was uh, raped by a thousand uh, so psychopaths uh, in a mental asylum, and thus you have like the most vile creature ever, Freddy Krueger. But of course, uh, later it comes to also show that uh, his father also abused him. Uh, so even if you do have those traits, um, yeah. they're kind of activated through the, that kind of abuse. Um, which kind of you know rewind back to that. Uh, 
forget his name, but he was a, uh, a guy who studies like the mental criminal mind and saw like his brain patterns matches a lot of uh, sociopathy. His genius matched a lot of that sociopathy. But the only thing he didn't have versus the long lineage of uh, murderers in his family was uh, he wasn't abused. He actually had a great childhood. I love my, my childhood. I love my family. There was nothing bad they ever did to me. It was great. So he finds like three ingredients that you need to kind of fulfill that violent uh, psychopathy and yeah. the third ingredient aside from brain activity, brain patterns and uh, genes uh, sequence would be uh, child abuse, something traumatic. Yeah. But in the film, film horror, in the film horror genre, we like we see like this preponderance of these types of movies, serial killer movies, in the eighties, right? Yeah. Like this was like when it was trending, and they were passing along these messages then. Like, what kind of change between them now or like? Um, Again, I think they're subconscious, man. I don't well, think course, they made them with that intent. Jason's passing around uh, abstinence. Uh, I believe so, like around. Uh, Camp well, you know, in all of the horror movies, like the the innocent the. Uh, the innocent people live longer. I mean, the, the you know the mm -hmm. the kids that are like having sex in the woods, like they oh, always are the first to die. The like the impure, yeah. like always. So like that, there's that message too. Like the yeah, cabin in the woods, the the right sinners. Remember that movie? Well, we all know yeah. the superstition, like how you outwit the boogeyman, and that's why serial killers that talk are so less threatening. Like ones that have ones that you have a dialogue with, like everything from Freddy Krueger to Hannibal Lecter, you know, you think you can control them, you think there's a way out of it. So um, all the things that were instilled within the slasher flick, you know, um, anywhere from, you know, the town that dreaded sundown up to a cabin in the woods that lays everything bare as to what the you know, superstitious ritual is, you know, you know there's, um, there's certain things you have to do to die. And those are the ways of pushing the cultural agenda, you know. So do you think yeah. Dexter Morgan would be like a part of the free market? Hey, we don't want serial killers around here. Let's pay this one dude to kill serial killers. Actually, he's a huge tool of the state because they have to have committed a crime for him to kill them. So that's how he's been doing it. So do you think he could just do that on the free market? I mean, you don't but have... But he didn't kill people just for committing a crime. He had like a moral... Oh, yeah. Code. Not, unlike code. Batman, they hadn't been given due process. So he did supersede he, the legal system. Well, he was studying he still had a code medicine, too. I believe. Uh, so he probably would have turned up to be a surgeon. And a lot of surgeons have to kind of remove themselves emotionally before they cut someone up and not be so screaming about blood. Uh, so there are kind of capacities uh, for just that. Find another thing to do. Right. That was our I agree with you. Still be killing people because hey, there's a market demand for people to get killed. I, I agree with you. I think yeah, there sorry. would be, but it would be a, like a very rare. Yeah. yeah. It's because and violence would already. That would be part of the DRO. So. What he'd be like a hitman. Well, a like DRO is for us to get in case. there, and if there's a point in which they're just a threat to yeah. everyone in the community. Hmm. Uh, if he's I, feel like they, I feel like really they well, I mean, set person at all. I, I would say, yeah, I think that's the first kind of a no, program. Yeah, I don't, I don't think yeah. it's like, you know, kill him first. I think it's like, look, it's like, look if someone tries to, to climb out, I, I expect for you to, you know, last week there's a use of force model that's yeah. used a lot, uh, you know, the escalation of uh, use of force. So it's not going to be necessarily murder. It's going to be, I'm going to detain you and, you know, put you right where you came from. Like, look, <laughs> you're climbing on the fence. What are you doing? I mean, you know, this is the thing. Like, what does due process look like in anarcho capitalism? Because, again, like, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't always have a polycentric legal system. People are even trying to take part of it. Well, those who don't want to take part of it, that's fine. When they have a conflict of dispute, uh, don't look look into us to resolve it, you know, until you resolve the other areas in which people have a conflict of dispute with you. So like, say something, someone would already be their customers. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like if you, you and I have a dispute, and I say, you know what, I don't care, I'm not going to resolve it, I'm not going to court, perfectly fine. And even I have a dispute with someone, they're going to say, well, you need to resolve that dispute with Tyler first, if you also want, you know, this kind of service or someone else. Um, you know, so I find it to be, I don't know, there are all kinds of uh, opportunities for... No, but again, because I'm not on your service, and Wait. I'm costing your company money, wouldn't you pay to whack me? Pay to whack you? To whack me, uh, Especially if I'm a criminal within your community. Your, I don't believe in your zero, your I don't care about your... No, I I fire I uh, I would uh, probably get a uh, guarantee uh, like a thousand dollars from the or a hundred thousand from the secure company that guarantee me to protect me, uh, and you let this uh, cycle let loose. Somehow they got past their security. Uh, either you know for them it will behoove them to improve security or get someone else who can do it better than them. All right, um, it's not going to be uh, to, to back them. Uh, you know, so they get a business. chaperone. I would assume that all places of business have like pretty much everything. Like everything is always being monitored. Yeah, I mean, security's not that expensive, like, uh, like Cameras, hearing... mics, and I'm, I don't mean crap cameras right. and mics, I mean, like, real ones that are going to get your conversation, they're going to know exactly what happens, so there's not this, oh, we can't really tell what they're saying, like... Right, there'll be a lot of incentives These, these for surveillance that. cameras are shit. 
when you look at the look at the feed, it's like I can barely fucking tell what I'm seeing. Why? This right. is terrible. But it, but it is still like a really good question. It's like due process. A due process. Due process. Yeah. Like if someone sneaks over the gate and runs. Or no, if someone has a fair trial and then you know what happens after that. And you're assuming that the community will have economic advantages that can inflict upon the individual. Like, hey, because you stuck up that person, I'm not going to sell you food. So you're going to starve to death unless you go somewhere else because I saw you out the store next door and you're a criminal now. So, like, even though. Uh, if a member of a community still, becomes a criminal? You think they would be excommunicated from the community itself? No, right? no, no, no. Are you saying if a community member does that? Yeah. No, not at all. I mean, so. I gave consent in the event that I steal from something, you know, I make reparations. That's in my contract in this community. And again, uh, if you don't do that though, but if you don't make reparations, you're assuming that other people in the community are now going to not do business. Well, and that's, and that's their own prerogative. I'm not going to say, hey, don't trust this person. They themselves will make that choice. Like, look, um, unless you make reparations, you know, I don't feel comfortable selling this sort of stuff. I don't feel that uh, that I should, you know, to, to a thief, you know, make reparations, yeah. make amends. Um, so do you see how that level of social ostracization, especially in the community, once like Ruben Upper in or whatever, could actually create violence? No, it's like, more conf beneficial to uh, be part of a community, to to be peaceful than to be violent. Well, not because, everyone would see it that way. Well, yeah, they'll, they'll see it immediately when their internet is cut off. I, I'm sorry, man, I'm yeah. just going really cynical here. No, no, I don't, I don't so think you're going cynical at all. No, no, I, I would say like they'll see it immediately when they go home. And there's no electricity when you turn on the, the light because like hey i don't want to serve electricity to to a thief you know to to a murderer you know or to, to someone who violates other Somebody people's consent. Somebody doesn't pay their bills and not gonna pay me. Yeah sorry it's like so, I, I don't want to be associated with such a person right and the people who contract with me don't also want to see that this business that they're contracted with also provides services to such uh, malignant people right so resolve the dispute uh settle in court uh otherwise you know good luck having no running water no electricity uh, and it's up to the prerogative of other business owners to see, even but sell you a criminal, so I'm just going to take yours. How are you going to take mine? There's you security just, standing okay, in front of your well, house I'll waiting for you to, to get out. Exactly, that's the thing. You could feel violent. If you want to be mess. suicidal, I wondered that. I wondered that too. Like, if you're homeless and you have a gun, how homeless are you really? If you're homeless and you have a gun? Because you can yeah. steal. Because you can just walk up, cap yeah. a family, and live there for a while. Right. <laughs> well, you could just go into one that has no nobody living in it and probably right? just hold and it not down. have to kill yeah. anyone. Not have to kill anyone. So, so this guy, so, come so you going into your home, uh, yeah, my, my security yeah. Yeah. Just squat has, yeah. Yeah. has liability place, to protect people from getting so murdered. They'll just stand outside your door waiting for you to, to go. So, so this was, I'm still security. working off like the serial killer. Example. This is we're still talking in mm. context. Yes. I didn't. Just, I didn't want to sound too sadistic. No, 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 no. No, that, that but, plays right into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I was coming. But of course, from. the biggest thing would be peaceful parenting, yeah. and that will prevent. For sure. Like we're talking like the Jeffrey Dahmer. If you weren't introduced to the cycle of violence, why would you perpetuate the cycle of violence? Right. It's like it's yeah. It's not a. They like to make it seem like it's a big thing that happens magically out of nowhere. He turns into a serial killer. Uh, there are no ingredients. There's no uh, pastime uh, experiences. Um, I but guess the justice would come from all the network of the family you capped. That's kind of initially what you'd have to rely on when we all turn voluntarist or whatever you want to call it. You know. Yeah, I, I don't want to live in a community that the race is serial killers. Can we all agree that not to spank or hit our child and you know raise them peacefully? If you have questions, we have a community of you know parents. Should be a relief from that, right? Yeah. 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 Otherwise, right? It's like you know what? If you guys feel otherwise, somebody is going to be like, "Well, are you not paying the bills?" Oh uh, no. Um, I I moved in because I killed some people. Uh, well, sorry, no. Yeah. Those people are dead. They have no value anymore, so you can't feed off of them that way. If you enslave them, you know, they still get out. How many people can you enslave at any given time? You know, you can hold somebody hostage, but, you know, you still got to eat. Right, yeah. <laughs> and we were talking about the free market for children, like, escape parents that they don't even want to live with. Like, there would probably be people that would want to support and fund yeah. These like safe houses, or even take people in, kids in that like you know at at, at thirteen they're like I don't want to live here anymore. My parents are you know they abuse me. Whereas now like you know you have to go through some fucked up legal system yeah. like oh no you can't you're staying there and they have to prove it and like if, if you have millions stuff. of dollars and you want to be a philanthropist I think like um, homeless shelters or safe homes and stuff like that like just big places where like people need. Yeah. But even then, the kid would have to like prove that they were being physically abused, and not just even like mentally yeah. abused by their parents. Because like, you know, the like, oh, mental abuse, like, like, what do you mean, like? I don't know. Right. There's all sorts of different situations, and the state might be like, no, you can't. You know, your parents like essentially own you, and unless you can prove that something is happening, you are gonna have to stay. Right. 
so in, in Kazakhstan, it's not going to be a huge homogenous society. There'll be thousands of competing societies. And when a child one day feels like they're mature, uh, I feel I was mature and ready like when I was uh, seven or eight, I guess all my life, from having no parents, uh, shitty parents. And so I would say that uh, they feel, I don't I think this is a shitty environment for me and no one in my community wants to adopt me or otherwise. Um, you can go next door, you know, for me, I guess in my community, I'll have like a Safeway house for anyone who feels like uh, they're ready to uh, increase their capital, <laughs> get out there and increase their skills. You know, well, I know a guy like has a job. It's a natural niche, you know, yeah. like to survive in this household, I either have to, uh, you know, perpetually beat up my siblings, suck my relatives, cock, you know, fight, flight, yeah. get along, do the, develop all this horrible, potentially psychotic and socially so, sociopathic behavior to survive, or you just go to the family across the street where in exchange for, you know, being cute, doing the dishes, fulfilling somebody's yeah. maternal instinct, or just providing, you know, labor for a bed and a cot, you know, fuck yeah, I can grow up to be a sound individual. I mean, that would be a wonderful fucking thing. Yeah. And it could have benefited so many people I grew up with. And to empower yeah. children to be able to make that decision mm -hmm. and not to be like a track. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a charitable thing, though. There's like plenty of ways that you can market that and actually be, make that a profitable area. Like, you know, labor true. wouldn't be true. illegal. You don't have to have a church or a huge building. I mean, you have the, some tactical urbanist kind of like little house projects, like street house projects, creating like very like affordable kind of pick up and go kind of little um, house housing structures yeah. that, that look that look nice in the city and like people don't and they're not like oh this is a creepy homeless park where this guy is living with a tarp and like there's a bunch of beer trash everywhere like these are like nice respectable little places in the city that they can make for homeless you know for for people in need and um yeah it can be a hugely profitable venture mm -hmm. And those children could leave and even work. If right. They want to yeah. at twelve? Yeah. Like, yeah, I would love to tend to the garden. And, yeah. You know, get however much in exchange for it per day. Or, yeah, the possibility. Yeah. 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 So like maybe, uh, yeah. Outside of that community, I have like this uh, banner, you know, like, hey, uh, if you guys want to, if I feel like this is a, an irrational community, like, like trying to. Like it's hard enough to try to talk to a parent that's spanking their kids or hitting their kids, right? So what do you do? It's like, do you defend the kid and hit the parent back? It's like, you know, acting self-defense of yourself and others. Um, maybe that's a, a way, of course, in today, most people don't accept that as being child abuse. You know, maybe a better way would be when you have these competing communities, you can have a banner that says, hey, you want to live a better life where no one's going to hit you, no one's going to yell at you, no one's going to hurt you or abuse you um, in any other way. Uh, just you're, it's free and voluntary. These societies are completely voluntary and consensual, so you're more than free to cross that boundary over here. Yeah, you know? imagine the commercials on TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're probably showing that community, but I'll have like a banner, I have a, maybe a blimp flying. Oh, no, you would pay over, them. Uh, you would pay, because they want your okay, money. Yeah, yeah. Those, those channels want your money. So right, if right, you right. want to play in a certain area, they will play it if you pay them money. All right, and so that could be a way to kind of uh, uh, lower the, I guess, the irrationality of those kinds of uh, parenting over time. Because you, know, you, don't, you don't own your kids. And uh, I think that's a horrible way to kind of raise them uh, for saying like, you, you owe me something, you know, I gave you a life. It's like, I didn't have a choice, right? It's not like- Would uh, be totally different? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I kind of bailed on the children this semester, like the juvie prison lit thing. I was just oh, yeah? like, yeah, this isn't gonna work with my schedule. What's that? People don't know what the fuck they're doing. I was supposed to be uh, helping out at juvie. Mm. Um, I got offered a position like that once, yeah. But I, I wasn't comfortable with the idea of giving to state my fingerprints. Right. Oh, you have to do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in order to get like access to 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 talk to the actual kids that are about to come out of UB, right? Well, that's the thing. The program got even worse. Uh -huh. Where I still gave my fingerprints and everything, and they were like, "Okay, well, we don't really want you in the classroom." I was like, "Well, I don't really want to be at your jail. Like, I'm sorry." All right. Okay. Get real. And um, yeah, I feel bad about that, but yeah, I don't. I don't think uh, kids in general could ever really do anything bad or wrong. And it's kind of funny when uh, some of the examples when I ask people, it's like, yeah, I got spanked. Like, oh, what did they spank you for? And then they have trouble sometimes remembering, but then trying to find like an extreme example, maybe like running on the kitchen table. It's like, <laughs> so that deserves for you to be Kids assaulted. Kids do something they know are wrong. Right. Morally, they know. Well, I, I, I think they can know. They're capable of knowing that like hurting animals. No, I would say that the social norm to instruct a child not to run across a table has not been taught, or, or something no, like that. No, I mean like. You're saying that children can't really do anything wrong, but yeah. they know they yeah. can. I don't think they're, they're culpable. Pretty animals, like you, 
Yeah. I mean, if uh, you knew uh, you're not supposed to hurt animals, you did it anyway. It's like I would say they're not uh, cobalt. Whatever they're doing, the parents have done to them, and they're just expressing that. So mm -hmm. really, it's well, the then you should fault. say that adults are not capable of doing wrong either, because like, at what point does a child become an adult? And maybe I'm just acting out. This. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you, you can have a uh, different variants of uh, thoughts and how the child could be culpable. I would say the ch child is culpable, but I would not say, I would not find the child at fault. I would say, yeah, I would what, say- At what point do you start finding an adult at fault? Like, it's just a word. Like, yeah, well right now, illegal. until, we'll like, like we're talking like the FIFA soccer games and people going to that, is it a moral to go to such a game? I mean, game I definitely knew shit that I knew was wrong as a kid. I would it's say really until wrong, you, you actually know that it's wrong. I did know it was wrong. Well, okay, that's great that you knew that. I don't think a lot of people know that, that as well. I don't think people today going to those FIFA soccer games know uh, that they're supporting, uh, I guess, the, the demolition of a lot of the party. Well, that's a little more complex than like knowing like I shouldn't steal. Well, what is taxation yeah, about that? Right? Some stuff. I definitely right. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of I, I did say that I knew it was morally wrong, but because I saw the happiness outweighing like what I was do hurting other people, and I was taught to kind of value that. Like, and you learned that all by yourself, and you and your parents are never. Oh yeah, right. and I got caught for it, and then I still did it. I, right, I but I'm saying stealing as an act of rebellion. Right. No. That too. I mean, you know it's wrong, but you do it. It's like I gotta work. Well, I would say. Or, even hurt other people. Did you ever? Like, you know that bullying's wrong, but it feels so good. Did your parents people? ever do something wrong to you, and you know that was wrong, but they still did it anyways? I don't know. I probably. I don't know if I rationalize right. it like that, but I still feel like kids know that when you know, can know when what the stuff. Sure, is. and I, I think. I think can, with many people, the the bullying is what supersedes it. You know, like. I don't remember why I was punished, but I remember that I was punished. And then I remember, you know, why I was punished and that I was punished. And then I remember doing what I was punished for and getting away with it, and that feels really fucking good. <laughs> and then I remember punishing somebody else for something I didn't like, and man, did that feel fucking awesome, you know? I mean, I think that's what the evolution arc of, you know, child abuse goes to. <laughs> Well, see, even if you talk to a child and be like, so this is why you do the bad things you do, or like, let's rationalize it together. You probably do it because of this reason. And they'd be like, yeah, you're probably right. Or like, at that point, like, do they become adults because they now recognize, like, why they might do certain things? And, you know, are they still... I would say that perhaps they're just growing up in an environment where adults, everyone's getting, trying to get away with doing bad stuff. Even adults don't even know why they do things. They just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a react, like, they're programmed to react a certain way to somebody acting passively aggressive to them, they feel attacked, so they act aggressively back, you know, and they don't even rationalize it. They're not even knowingly like, oh, that person was just passive aggressive to me, and I'm reacting this way to them because they did that, and so should they not be held cult, you know, responsible? Uh, uh, because... For me, I, I give everyone a clean slate, because uh, a lot of people I'm don't know. I'm just saying how you universalize that then. Well, yeah, 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 of course, of course, but if we want to say this is NCAP society, everything's consensual, everything's voluntary, so all, so all that stuff is kind of null void. If we're talking about how we feel about it, how it exists today, uh, I give everyone uh, a second chance. Uh, not everybody knows to a full extent uh, what it is uh, in, in defining morality. I don't think that's ever been properly taught to them or defined properly what is that because then their parents are doing that to them in, in forms of uh, supporting taxation, supporting um, social security, right? Using their own child as collateral. That's kind of well, fucked up. Well, you said you felt like you could have been on your own. Yeah, I, I, I could have been on my so own. So technically you would maybe consider not like... I don't know, at what point do you consider yourself an adult versus a child? Like, so uh, is, is the question, like, at what point are, are you, you know, a moral agent? Is that the question? I guess. I guess, you know, well, you, you can use it that way, and there's some interesting arguments for that. I'd rather go the specious roots in which every human being is a moral agent, um, and including a child, but I'm not going to take a child into court if he bumps into my knee on accident, right? Mm. Or, or what anything if a child like that. Sets your house up? The child sets my house on fire. Because technically, like you would say, maybe your parent, the parents are responsible for watching that child and make sure, like. Well, that's, that's why I have fire insurance. Fire. That's why I have that. Hey, it was an accident. These things happen. Um, if it wasn't an accident. If it wasn't an accident. I'm just saying. Uh, was the child's goal to kill cow or all right, set the right. house on fire? All right, all right, all right. Well, they were lighting tennis balls. Let's let's, 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 rewind, let's rewind backwards. <laughs> let's rewind backwards. <laughs> let's rewind backwards. So obviously, you know, we'll have uh, communities that we kids who are going to participate in and going to school. And the school doesn't want to have children who are bullies who are the bullies uh, to other kids, right? I want to, I don't want my child to ever be bullied or dress up on it in any way, especially by other, other people's kids. So, of course, the incentive would be for the instructor, for the places that's uh, providing this kind of, uh, or encouraging this education to do brain scans into children to show that they do not have this uh, sociopathic uh, brain patterns that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Obviously, hey, this kid has one. 
there seems they might have a tendency to do that. Let's look into that. Sorry, you can't. You're not welcome to this community until we kind of address that uh, that issue. Ooh, we can't so take that like, liability. That's not pretty high class gated community. You're not letting people in now because of something. Oh no 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 it has, no, no, it has, has, has nothing to do with letting anyone in. It has nothing to do with like not letting. I, I, like, I you I'm, I'm very saying I'm not letting anyone into this house. I thought you were saying you're not allowed in the community if you like. You have different preferential communities you want to take and associate that risk. Uh, you have yeah, a lot of them, but all but I guess if you're talking about in a campus stand, I was that I would imagine that to be a peaceful society. So if you go to take a psych exam to live in an area, well, uh, it's kind of like being more than that. Yeah, if, if, if you're, yeah. I don't think you can't fool the brain pattern together. So you can't fool. You, you can't know fool how to test the but, but this, 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 this <laughs> would be post arrest, right? You know how you're supposed to answer. Uh, that's very true. Uh, but that's the military. Military are not efficient. They're but not efficient. Still, like consumer driven. Can, like, you know how you're a consumer to driven business that that uh, that understands that. Applying to work like any blue collar job, you know. Right. I'm just saying these are ways to kill a coworker. Yes or no? Would you pocket that hundred dollars? But I would say. There's a lot of preventative measures to find out before that kid wants to burn down your house. And I think that's what we should focus on first. And so trying to address what happens afterwards, let's provide solutions to prevent just things. And crime's actually going down. Like, what was the reason he burned your house down in the first place? Like, was he just bored? You know, like, there's so many... It all goes back to him saying that why. kids shouldn't be... No, no, I, no, 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 I say they are. I would what? not help him. Personally, that's my, that's my preference. I think all, every human being is uh, morally responsible. For all their actions, regardless of what age or what's what young or whatever you are, I would not hold a child responsible though, um, and that's my preference. You know, if a child hits me in the knee, hey, it's an accident, fine. If a child hits you, Tyler, in the knee, you're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm taking this shit to court. Uh, <laughs> Your child is like very minuscule. No, 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 no. It but people, no, the people will look at you true. as an asshole for yeah. doing that, right? Yeah. But you're more than free to do that. You broke the law. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that could be done in something without malice. Like, I knew a guy who nearly burned his family, hung down, set his room on fire, and went to write in the sky like a wicked witch of the West. You know, I mean, right. kids, they do these things because they have no, um, like, suspension of disbelief. You know, the world is awesome and new, and consequences are very momentary. You know, they're right. just trying to eat, be comfortable, and entertain themselves. Well, at some point, like, someone's got to be responsible. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, for the, the, parents like, would have to be. the parents would have to be. So, yeah. like, essentially, you would say that you wouldn't hold the kid responsible, but you right. might hold that kid's. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to uh, the parents. You know, right. parents or guardians right. responsible then. Right, and that's so much that. At what event... point does it flip over? What well, you, does you, that well, you, person you, become responsible for? You action? can take uh, responsibility for other people's uh, crimes. Right, but at what point does a kid? Right. No, 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 no. Well, but it, it could be whatever, whatever the kid feels like it. I would say. For me, I would never. I would always want someone else to be responsible for me. But, well, uh, <laughs> oh, I guess in, in that regards, I guess in regards to who you're offending, remember the, the community at large doesn't really have or so much to say. Yeah. yeah, or the contract is whoever you victimize. You know what? No, this is bullshit. I think you're above mind of age. You know, like uh, you could be a national to a kid who's three years old and bumping into you, or you could be. Uh, saying that, hey, it happens, it's a little kid distance so much, so I go to, um... Or the parents signed a provision in the contract saying that, you know... Yeah, like, if I'm on a wall and it's crowded and people, you know, rough shoulders, so it's like, hey, you just touched me, I didn't consent to that, it happens. I'm in a crowded place, that's, that's a social work to be expected, or going to a mosh pit. Even not driving a car, fuck, we all nearly... But that was my girlfriend's there. butt, yeah. and this is a sexual assault charge. Oh, shit. Oh, see? <laughs> <laughs> that kid's going to jail. <laughs> no, no, these, these are... Serious. I, I find that eventually it will come across a good social norm rule over time. Uh, well, I think at, over time, this is not going to ever be an issue, well, but obviously like, the, the, the time that everyone's questioning about is like, the right. switch over. Uh, yeah, the switch over. Like, that yeah. like, oh, oh, everyone's not like morally, you know, on the same page. Well, that depends well, on the victim. They're still coming to the breast for sustenance, because you can do that up to age five. Right. Yes. And that so means all women need to be home. Instead of working now. I, I, I <laughs> would argue, it falls out of you quick keep feeding it as long as she comes requesting it, you know? I mean I'm all for having free range children that, you know, I raise and taking others on, you know, I mean fuck. Like Game of Thrones. Bring back the kid. white nurses. Oh yeah. Because there's so much no no in society about how much even at the yeah, shop, really, like if somebody else's work. kid behind comes right. behind the counter, I'm like, okay, I can't quite touch you, but I'm gonna I, guide you out of here. I wouldn't want to be around like I'm interfering with their kid. And I'm scared of children because of that. They're like both they're like wolverines that are made of fine china, you know? <laughs> very destructive and very delicate and very much, I don't know how to handle these things because of all those social constructs around them. I agree. Yeah. Uh, hmm. so, again, I would, 
I would still I say you're very good with Olivia from what I've ever heard. I know she's stressing you out, but you, you use great Dad is watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean little kids are stressful, and he understands that I'm sure more than anybody else. But like during should I not talk during like when you were giving her the bath and you were talking about being nice to the cats, you are awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love how I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, parenting one oh one. <laughs> so one of the things people actually address when making restitution is the economic generation of the future production of that person's labor. So if they are actually economic generators within the community, any crime would actually be held against their reputation, which again would affect the way they produce economically. So the argument could be they're an economic agent, therefore they should be held responsible. An economic for agent? Labor. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah so usually when you start working, right. what age are you? Like 15, 16? But it's not a mass thing, though. So it's not like uh, like when when I go on Etsy, I don't communicate. I don't get a message from everyone saying like, "Don't trade with that person." It has a person one star at a star. I assume that risk. Like you know what, two three stars. I, I see the comments. that kind of go back for they're all over the place. The star level. It's like oh, I'll assume the risk and, and take that myself, right? And that be on a on an individual basis and how much they value that, right? So someone feels, look, I feel like uh, they treated you wrong. I feel like you deserve a second chance. I'll give you that second chance, right? It doesn't have to be an immediate cutoff. I get a dis oh, vary, and that's so much like uh, the victim will vary. So like, you know what? I'm not going to seek restitution. I'm just going to let it go. The only person, like in terms of like crimes committed, the only person who has any say in what the reparation will be and how the... the is the victim. Exactly. Yeah. No one else has so, any say in that whatsoever. Integer credit. Right. Yeah, integrity. Like, right. <laughs> right. Um, really? So, like, children can be taught to be economically responsible even before they have a job. Like, yeah. Like, taking care of chores around the house. Like, people that work on a farm. Like, Joel Salatin's book, his yeah, kids are helping true. out on the farm, like, when they can walk. It's still proof that you can make restitution stuff. based on your future actions. All right. Which I mean, would be holding some more His kids had $25,000 in the bank. By the time they were like 18. He's pimp. He's like, that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's taught them, he taught them economics, but by the time they're 18, they have enough to go buy a car and pay it off. Like, yeah. Was that on top of just That's his... That's a dumb discussion. Well, like, like, they, they helped his kids <laughs> establish their own building. Establish a credit. Like, are they like, unschooled or... Yeah, they're, they're Are they unschooled? Like, I don't. I, think I mean, I think they're homeschooled. Like, I don't okay. know. He doesn't know. I don't think he knows. I would them. imagine that they're homeschooled. And they're they're, they're homeschooled, school. and they said that people around them would even give them, you know, shit for it. Because even back then. No, like, but they're so much farther ahead than everyone else in their class. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. They are, and then actually, if their kids want to leave the farm and not be there, they're like totally. I mean, they have a daughter that left and went to college, and she's like fashion and all that. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's beautiful. Uh, that's, I would imagine that's so what it should be. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I find it to be that to be the case. Not so much like no one's responsible. So that way I avoid the whole uh, argument in which is this child a moral agent? Because then that guy, you know, delves into well, he's not a moral agent, so we can treat this child as anything as we would uh, a cattle or pets or anything. Uh, we, we've talked about this earlier. Chattel. I mean, that used yeah. to be an accepted term of, okay, my daughter is a uh, an asset, you know, that I can exchange for, you know better relations with my neighbors, you know, I mean, right. back, it, it, was, it was a perfectly accessible social thing of, you know, slavery to your immediate family, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, so this way we avoid that whole uh, aspect of it. Uh, therefore, we just say, I'm a species, human beings over everything else. As a human being, moral agent, uh, automatically applied. Um, so we don't have to go to the, you know, the scales that would be used or like the law of identity of uh, whether you're a more Asian or not and how that would apply. Uh, for me, that's going to be different. That's going to be from each person to each person. And it's not, you can't really apply that universally. Um, Could we um, maybe kind of boil it down and conclude that any non-consensual relationship pretty much is doomed to fail? Um, Oh, it's doomed to make a person feel professionally um, threatened, you know, like it, it's never a It's and never a nonviolent situation. Exactly. You know? I mean, yeah, and yeah. people are It plants a seed, I, I would say, otherwise. Like, we're, we're, like here with Anna, we plant the seeds for a, a peaceful, generous, uh, cooperative, uh, beautiful yeah. generations. The opposite, the non-consensual side of it plants a seed for um, the malevolent for that evil for uh, for serial killers, um, you know, depending on like their further growth and how much of that uh, is given at them. Um, so 
I think that could be, I guess, the opposite <laughs> of what they're... Johnny Bad Apple seat out there. We got to have to... Let me know that's also the argument for capitalism. Well, I mean, I would... You could take it both ways, especially when it came to, um, to how tax dollars were spent, right? Whether or not those voluntary or involuntary transactions actually were more or less profitable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like I'm just thinking again from urban planning aspect. I don't want to build something that people don't want to use. Right. But that happens all the time, right? And then that's where we see dysfunction in our in our cities. Mm. So. Um, but I think the dysfunction comes from like uh, you have to go through whole bureaucracy to build something. Well, yeah. So I mean, that takes a longer time. So for you and in a free society, you can kind of keep improving, keep adapting. Keep but you can updating. want the bureaucracy still, right? Uh, you can still want the bureaucracy. Um, but it, I guess like homeowners associations. There's yeah. a voluntary bureaucracy, and that's having you know, like, yeah, it's, um, it's like in the Brady Bunch movie. If I may bring up a non-horror film, you know, like he has <laughs> one building he always sells, and after you bat out like five times, somebody's like, "Oh, that's perfect. That's what I want." You know, you you gotta find your niche instead of creating your niche by force. You know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. So we got uh, five minutes left on the clock here, and uh, well, time to get naked. Point. Oh, that's right, true. So yeah, I, I guess we're gonna. Uh, no, Arizona had uh, to go somewhere real quick. Yeah. And I have to use the bathroom now, so right. I'm excited about to take a piss. <laughs> so oh, I'm wet. So I'm going for time to come back. So yeah, I, I would say, um, going all the way back to uh, Clinton and like uh, you didn't build that uh, business and stuff and build it. It seems to kind of seems like it comes out of nowhere. Jobs come out of nowhere. It comes out of the decree of government. Um, it comes out it does. Tax dollars. I mean, if you think about how many people are employed by governments. Or the well, those are not real like jobs, I would say. That. No, exactly, and that's but that's the numbers they're using. At the same time, I would say some of those jobs would still exist today. Uh, they were not monopolized. Really, was that your life? What is a real job? Like, well, for me, what do you mean for, real? Uh, well, for for me, it's uh, it would be it, it's uh, illegitimate. Uh, or whatever be. there's a niche for. Right, right. But uh, yeah, and uh, again, this goes back to you know, what if I'm an anarchist working for the state? So it has nothing to disparage anyone who's working watching this who works sure. for the state. This is just mostly uh, like the city council members who say to Hardest Park Brewery that um, that those that that's a meal tax. You know, now your beer is considered meal tax. Thirty, forty thousand dollars that they could have paid to hire a new employee, but that goes back to their city council jobs instead. Are you sure that that's how they they uh, cited on that one? Is that uh, how they? Well, that, that's what they determined on that. Are you sure? Because I know last time I heard it, it was like in the air. Uh, yeah, last time I heard it was in the air too, but it's not something that they would usually kind of give up on. And we'll, we'll look into that again. It's been a while. So I'm just wondering because that would affect a lot of breweries. Now breweries would have to start serving. Yeah, I thought the meals tax, meals tax went wide and citywide. Then. Yeah, they, they, they've been trying to pass a lot of stuff, and I think it probably has been passed, especially in the surrounding counties. Uh, increasing meal tax, increasing uh, the beer as a meal. All right. Yeah, so I, and that doesn't really, I wouldn't say that's, uh, I mean, for me, I look at legitimizing uh, what is a job, something that's consensual, that's in the volunteer, something in which you earn that kind of uh, value in exchange for another value. Uh, yeah. And that's so much I don't really look at uh, thieves pickpocketing someone as, uh, as a job. As yeah, word. what's happening is that government is, is monopolizing services that would otherwise be private. Right. And then saying that government creates jobs. Right. And they're stealing yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's pretty ridiculous. Like, like, I'm yeah. very certain that well, it was still exist. They, they, they say you to pay your taxes and that it's voluntary, but they're really stealing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm very certain there'll still exist mail services and the absence of the monopoly mail. There'll still exist uh, ABC stores. Well, not ABC stores. Than that name, but there'll still be people who will sell maybe strictly Aqua. This is what we uh, specialize in. Great, it's like many specialized stores when the monopoly on uh, distilled spirits ends. Um, but I would say for a lot of the government jobs, though, for the majority of them, it's like they, they wouldn't exist. Uh, the bureaucracy, for example, maybe a community, a uh, committee overseeing a, a, community, a golf course community <laughs> or a 55 and older community in Florida, you know, those sort of uh, retrospect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I would say it's really is businesses that create those jobs. And then the profit, the value that they create is stolen from them and distributed otherwise into other areas um, that may or may not actually really exist. Like those uh, FIFA stadiums <laughs> that we were talking about. Or Sousa. But I rolled a six, man. We're playing Monopoly. All right. <laughs> so with that, uh, how do you guys feel? Good conclusion good, good. for... Uh, yeah? Huzzah. Huzzah. All right. Salute. Liberty RVA. Liberty RVA. Peace.